Hey guys, Sandman in Kerbal Space Program 2, and I wanted to try landing up hold using no methalox fuel. This is the main type of fuel in the game, so I'm expecting things to get a little weird. Now, of course, here I'm starting out in the sandbox, and you can see the first thing I wanted to do was look at these hydrogen engines. Now, I was hoping the hydrogen was going to be able to save me here, and you can see after putting down a fuel tank and a command pod, I wanted to give this a test. Now, hydrogen is pretty similar to methalox, but you can see here launching this off, it's super weak. Hydrogen is optimized for exploring pouring out once you're in space, but on the ground, it's really weak, and you can see here it's struggling to lift it up. At the very least, though, it was working, so I was curious if I was going to be able to launch off a rocket with just hydrogen. Now, my first order of business here is to get rid of the command pod, and you can see after that, I put down a different one, and I started to build up a lander. Now, I decided here it was a little bit small, though, so I got rid of the tank I was using and also started using this larger command pod. After that, you can see here I put down this quad coupler, and I snuck on four engines. Now, I'm not exactly sure why I used four of the smaller engines rather than just this one larger one, but I guess I wanted to be a little bit different. Once that was in place though, I also put down some of these legs here, and after having some minor problems where I couldn't seem to attach a ship to the parachutes, I eventually had to reload and I did get it here, and I also added on some solar panels. Now the parachutes of the solar panels weren't strictly necessary, but just in case I ever want to get the ship back up into orbit, it should be pretty handy. Now speaking of that as well, I also added on some RCS thrusters here, and I deleted off the parachute on top and replaced it with a docking port. Now, I also changed up the colors here, and I see I went for the bare metal in red, which I thought was a pretty good combo. I was also getting a little distracted, and I added on way more lights and replaced the solar panels with ones that were a little bit more fitting. And finally now, after finally adding on some fins, I flipped this thing over, and I got ready to put on the bottom stage. Now, for this, what I was thinking was adding on a docking port and two of these spherical hydrogen tanks. I wasn't really sure how stable they were going to be, but they did look pretty cool, so I figured I'd run with them for now. Now, I stuck out one of these large hydrogen ends into the bottom, and between the two tanks, I added on a probe core, a couple batteries, and a bunch of reaction wheels. Now, after seating those back together, I also used some struts here to hopefully keep things a bit more rigid. Now, finally, with everything in place, though, I added on a fairing to try to cover the whole thing and keep it slightly more aerodynamic. Once that was in place, though, I wanted to give this a test of the launch pad and just make sure everything was going to hold together. Now, it was a little weak, but launching off these fairings here, it did seem to do the trick, and now I just need to get my bottom stage on that gets me off off the ground. For this, I was thinking of just using a decoupler and one of these large hydrogen tanks again. On this though, I added on an engine plate and you can see here, I'm trying to stack as many of these small engines as I can. Now, I was hoping just by having a sheer mass of these engines, I should be able to get off the ground and you can see here, I also copied this over four times. Now, I was assuming this is going to be a lot of thrust, but I was also a little concerned about the amount of engines I just put on this, and that seemed to be a pretty good concern. My game got very laggy, I got this end screen, and then it just launched up into the air. Not really sure what's up with that, so I did another reload here, and this time it was a little more clear what happened. It just seemed like the engine started vibrating and kind of just exploded out. One thing I was thinking here was adding on four of these grabbers of the sides to keep the engines off the ground. This should remove a little stress, but the engines seem to still not like this a lot and were vibrating a ton. I was pretty sure I was never gonna get around that, so my next solution here was to get rid of one of the hydrogen tanks on my main stage, and after that, I seeded everything back into place. Now, this time at the very least, nothing bad was happening, but I did have some minor staging issues, and the rocket started to just fall over. Now, I reverted back to the launch pad here, and I'm not sure why the fairing looks like it's about to explode, but at the very least, I was able to give this a shot before these engines were weren't powerful enough to get it off the ground. At this point though, I definitely didn't learn my lesson and I decided to add on four more sets of these engines. 16 of these should've given me a bit more power and while it didn't vibrate apart this time, I still just didn't have enough thrust to get off the ground and I was gonna have to lower the weight. Now I decided to take my main hydrogen tank and lower it down to 10 tons. This makes it considerably lighter and with this, at first I didn't think I was gonna get anywhere but it actually did slowly start to hover off the ground. Of course though, this was very very slow, and after not very long, I ran out of fuel, and I knew this wasn't gonna get me anywhere. Back in the vehicle assembly building, though, you can see now I'm putting out some solid rocket fuel boosters. I realized that for a lifting stage, there's really no reason why I can't just exclusively use these, and while I don't have any throttle controls, I shouldn't need them. The other good thing about these is that they're so self-contained, it's easy for me to stack a ton of these on each other, and you can see now I added some onto the outside, and added on some nose cones. And to surround things off here, you can see I added on two more sets, and with this, I wanted to give it a test. At first, though, it seemed to completely ignore the fact that I connected them together, and the whole rocket seemed to just fall apart. I 
don't really understand this one, but I mean, okay. So I went back to the vehicle assembly building here to try to brace everything together a bit more, but then my rocket was in the ground, so... I mean, I guess. So after reloading the entire game and bracing everything together, finally back on the launch pad now with some extra fins, I wanted to give this a launch test, and things looked okay at first, but there was quite a deviation to the side. Now, also looking at the rocket here, I could see the lander was coming out of the fairing, and it was bending a lot. This, of course, is a massive problem, so I added some fins onto the bottom to keep it a bit more straight, and also braced everything together a lot more. Finally, with this, I went for another launch test, and for the first time, I actually got off the launch pad here and didn't immediately bend. Now with this, I got a point a bit higher here, and you can see once I got up high enough, my solid rocket fuel boosters ran out, and I went to launch off the four that were in the middle. Now they were a little close to each other, but I was hoping it wouldn't be too big of a deal, but it definitely was, and they slammed back into the rocket and broke off one of them. Now to hopefully solve that, I don't some of these Separatron rockets at the bottom here that automatically push away the boosters. Now these seem to do their trick, and even though they were a little laggy, they did pull everything away here, and I just had the middle boosters pushing the rocket. This was not a very stable rocket though, and I can see here that everything was bending quite badly. It was holding together well enough though, so I just kept it going and I tried to extend out my orbit. Now as you can see, I actually don't have an orbit technically, it's just a trajectory, and I was hoping to round that out, but the rocket had other ideas, and you can see now it's starting to pitch up quite badly. Fortunately, it did seem to extend it out well enough here, and I wanted to drop a quick save before I launched off the next stage. Now, I don't like that the game doesn't pause when you go into the menu here, because the rocket eventually broke apart, but at the very least, the save did kind of work, and after loading this, I wanted to try deploying off the fairing and getting the stage working. This seemed to be fine at first here, and you can see now, the bottom stage completely went away, and I was able to extend my solar panels. Now, of course, I still don't have an orbit, but I was hoping that the hydrogen engine was going to be able to extend out the orbit a bit more, so I warped over to the apoapsis, and after I did that, I was planning to extend out the orbit, but that's when I noticed that these fins in the bottom stage were still hanging around. I'm really not sure why they're there, but at the very least, I was hoping to just blow away from them and start to extend it out. Now, this did actually seem to work here, and easily enough, I extended up the orbit, but my camera was starting to get really weird, and I think what was happening is it was centering me in between the fins and the rocket. This is just super buggy, and it's also making it impossible to figure out what's going on. So I just loaded back. I tried to launch my rocket once again, but once I did this, the game got even weirder. For whatever reason, trying to extend on my orbit, her even was going super fast around me, and my orbit seemed to be completely disintegrating. I'm really trying my best here, but it seems like the game really doesn't want this to happen. But fortunately, I do have one extra tool here. I ended up installing some mods, and you can see now, I'm launching off the launch pad just so that it counts as my rocket being fully launched, and I ended up setting my orbit around Kerbin. Deploying off the fairings, for whatever reason, makes them just do this and start launching towards Kerbin, so so I don't even know what's going on anymore. But at the very least, you can see here, starting to burn prograde, and I went for a counter around the mud. With this, I should be able to get a good assist and fling myself out all the way towards Jewel. And with pretty much no difficulty at all, I was able to warp away here, and you can see now I exited the Sphere of Influence. Now with that, I was hoping to extend myself out towards Jewel, but I noticed that it was going to cost me over 2,000 meters per second to Delta V. Since I had to drain my massive spherical fuel tank, I didn't have enough fuel for this, and instead, I wanted to extend myself out towards do not. This, of course, isn't ideal, but I should be able to salvage it, assuming that I get a good gravity assist here. And if that's too much difficulty, I'm to get that set here, and I started to warp over towards the encounter point. Now, unfortunately, it still seems like my game is a little bugged, and I don't get to have any trajectory paths around where Duna is, so I kind of just had to guess where I was going to be encountering it. Now, judging by these entrance and exit points, my assumption was the path was going to look something like this. That seemed to make sense to me, and it was going to be relatively easy to try to get an encounter. Unfortunately, though, it actually looked like this, which I guess also makes sense, but it's a little bit weird, and it's also not really going to be recoverable. You can see now I'm pulling in those entrance and exit bubbles to be right around Duna. Now, after setting my thrust limiter down a ton here, you can see I performed that burn, and with that, now I had a much better path around Duna. This still wasn't going to be perfect, though, and I wanted to make sure to get this as efficient as I could. Now, in reality, I probably should have done some flybys of Eve instead of Duna, since I think you could do it a little bit faster, but Duna is just such a 
good target to get some nice shots around here, so I actually wasn't too displeased with this. Now, also exiting the Sphere of Influence here, you can see my orbit is actually very closely matched to Duna's. That made it a little annoying to get my second encounter here, but once I did, this one's gonna be super efficient, and I should get myself flung out way further. Now, it also took one more encounter here to get myself flung around fully, and with all of this, I finally had myself out at a large enough distance that I could burn all the rest of the way to Jewel. Now, I probably could have done a few more encounters to try to save some more fuel, but in reality, I just didn't really need to do that, and setting these up, considering I can't see the path beforehand, is really annoying. With that encounter made, though, here you can see it warped all the way over to Jewel, and with this, you can see here my trajectory, which actually is going to go into the surface. Now, I extended it out a tiny bit here, and Jewel's atmosphere goes up to 200,000 meters. My hope was to dip into 160, and I figured that should slow me down and fully capture me. I really didn't know what to expect at this point, but as I got closer in, I noticed something was happening with the clouds, and you get this super cool effect. This was genuinely breathtaking, and I had no idea this was gonna happen. Now, the dithering on the clouds is kinda bad, but my settings are pretty much all the way down, so I actually recorded a locked 60 FPS. Now, so in this very short flyby here, once I passed the periapsis, I finally got captured and started to pull in my orbit a lot more. Once I got into about the distance I wanted, I retracted the solar panels to try to reduce my drag as much as possible. Now, this seemed to do the trick here, and you can see now, I finally got captured and had a pretty good trajectory. You can see here my periapsis, I got above 200,000 meters, and with this, I was actually in orbit. So now, I was able to re-extend my solar panels, and it was time to undock the lander and try getting to pull. Trying to undock the lander, though, was where things got bad once again. Once I hit the undock button, you can see here the game lagged for a second, and then just said I failed. I really wasn't sure what was up with that, so I just did a quick reload, and I actually hadn't saved once I extended out my orbit, so I just had to do that once again. It wasn't too big of a deal, but once I got up to the top again, I tried to undock, but it still just failed me. I wasn't really sure what was going on. I don't think Jeb knew what was going on either. So I tried doing some other stuff here to separate up these ships. Now, I tried rotating them up a ton, but this, of course, didn't get me anywhere, but what actually did seem to work was trying to time warp and then trying to burn away the lander. For whatever reason, this did separate them, but you'll notice, though, the camera isn't exactly in the right spot. It seems to be between the ships, which is exactly the problem I was having before. Now, I knew at this point there was pretty much no saving this, but I wanted to try messing around for a few more minutes here to see if anything would change. Now, time warping seemed to link these ships right back up to each other in the spots that they should be. Weirdly enough, too, trying to rotate one ship will also rotate the other one, so they're really just acting like they're one vessel. Now, I also considered burning away here and seeing if that would do anything. Now, trying to get further away, of course, the camera just became a complete nightmare, and Jeb seemed to have some minor problems in the cockpit. And also, the ship also was not really doing so well. So, I don't really understand what's going on anymore. So, what I ended up doing here is going back to the launch pad, and you can see I launched off the two ships again. With this, I was gonna use my cheats again to try to get around Jewel and just have them be separate vessels. These mods are still well in their infancy, though, and trying to get around Jewel here, I ended up ejecting away at 23,000 kilometers per hour. That's, like, really fast. I think it's like a tenth the speed of light or something, so that definitely isn't right. Now, I tried once again here, and then for a higher orbit around Jewel to see if that would help anything, and the rest of the lander was just gone, but at the very least, the bottom was here. Now, for attempt three, I tried setting an orbit around Kerbin first before going to Jewel. This seemed to help out a lot, and I think the problem was that I was stepping up in speed way too fast, and the game was getting really confused. Easily enough, though, I was able to get both the lander and the main ship up into orbit, and with these, it was time to try going for that pole landing. Now, both times that I had to use cheats here, I set myself into a lower energy orbit, so theoretically, these cheats shouldn't have helped me get to pole. While I'm in this orbit, though, I'm actually super close to lave, and I want to give a shot trying to do a gravity assist here. This is going to be a big help, and the lander, I noticed, didn't have as much fuel as I was expecting, so it was a little concerning. After a quick time warp, though, you can see here, I'm once again around lave, and I finally entered its sphere of influence. I also noticed here that the lights were, for some reason, all off of the ship I, I don't I do not. But at the very least, I did get that gravity assist done, and while well, Lave did get super low graphics, I was able to extend myself out a bit more again and get my encounter with Pole. Now, once again, I couldn't see any lines around Pole, but at the very least, I planned myself to go right into the surface, and I figured that would be pretty easy to tune around. So for a quick time warp here, I got into Pole's sphere of influence, and you can see now exactly what's gonna happen. Now, I figured that very easily, if I burn radial out, I should be able to get myself right off the surface and get my 
myself a periapsis. Now, as I was warping towards it though, it was one of those times where I kind of forgot I was making a video and I probably shouldn't land at night. So what I did here is actually loaded back my save and you can see instead of burning to the left side and burning to the right where it's actually day. This is slightly more inefficient, but realistically, it's actually a pretty negligible amount of fuel. And with this, I finally was getting near the surface. Now, fortunately, this little area that I found here was pretty flat and I really didn't want to overshoot it. So I decided to start doing my retrograde burn pretty early on. This did secure me the spot, but it was taking forever to land and I was getting very impatient and eventually just burned straight into the surface. With this, it was not taking very long at all to get near the surface. And you can see now I'm progressively getting slower and slower to try not to slam into it. Now, the specific area that I'm landing on isn't the most flat, but it did seem to be good enough. And with this, I actually did manage to touch down. The bounce I had was a little concerning, but it did seem to be okay, and my landing legs seemed to adjust to it pretty easily. Now, with all that finally done, I just wanted to get Bill on the surface here and try exploring around, but for some reason, he wasn't leaving the vessel, and I didn't see anything obviously blocking the door, so that's great. So, with a little bit of help here, you can see I actually did manage to get on the surface now and start to explore around. This was my first time going for a mission on the public release build, and to be honest, I really wasn't happy with a lot of these bugs. Undocking ships and having them constantly have problems is super annoying, but I actually think the bigger problem is that there's no trajectory paths around bodies. This just makes it like impossible to plan anything, and it also means that it's very difficult to conserve fuel. But I'm hoping these fix these issues, and if you guys have any more mission ideas, make sure to leave them down below. Also, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.